the City of Port Moody Cultural Days event. Today we are going to be mono printing with a jelly plate. I'm also going to show you how to make a jelly plate as well. My name is Sarah Graham and I'm the resident artist for the City of Port Moody. Okay, so here is the jelly plate that we're going to be making today. As you can see, it's quite rubbery. You can purchase these in an art supply store like Opus, but what we're going to be doing is making a much more inexpensive version. Now, I'm a vegetarian, and so I've decided to make a vegetarian-friendly jelly plate as opposed to most which are found online using gelatin. However, if you find that you would prefer to make a gelatin plate because you even have gelatin at home, then I have found a really great online resource that I will include in the instruction sheet that you can refer to. What we will be using today is agar agar powder. It is a seaweed and it becomes gelatinous when it's mixed with water. So it's a great vegetarian substitute for gelatin. It is a little bit harder to find and that is why I recommend it that you might want to use gelatin if you can. I did find mine at Palm Natural Food Market. What you will also need is some water, some salt, and glycerin. Now glycerin is an item too that is a little bit harder to find. It's not in every store, but I did find this bottle at the Shoppers Drug Mart on St. John's. We're going to start mixing our solution. Once you start mixing everything, you'll want to do everything in quite sort of rapid succession just because the liquid can start to solidify. And so you want to make sure that everything is pre-measured and that you're all ready to go. So the first ingredient that you'll want to put in is the agar agar. Now, you'll want 25 grams. And this package that I bought from Palm had 50 grams in it, so I was able just to divide it into half. So we'll put that into my pot. So the next ingredients is we're going to want to put in one teaspoon of salt. The salt helps to change the pH balance of the water just to make it a little bit harder, which gives you a slightly firmer plate. And then we want to add 300 milliliters of water. Now, you want to mix this very, very well, and a whisk is very handy, and you want to make sure that there's absolutely no lumps. It's best to let this maybe sit for five minutes just to make sure that you've gotten rid of all your lumps. The next step is to put the heat on and you want a medium heat and you do want to be continually stirring your solution. You will notice quite quickly that it starts to thicken up almost like honey and when that happens you turn off your heat and you will add your glycerin. You will need to add your glycerin quite fast and stir it in really really well and then you want to pour it into your molding dish and I have used glass and you just let it sit for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes and so I'm just gonna release the plate from the mold. I'm gonna use a knife to help ease it out. I'm just going to pick it up and I notice it's a little bit wobbly so I'm just gonna trim off the sides to make sure that it's gonna be able to lie flat. It cuts very easily and I'm just gonna take this and remove them. Now we're ready to print. I have laid out a baking sheet to help with the printing process. I find that it makes it really less messy. You will want a baking sheet underneath your jelly plate to prevent any ink from spreading, but you also want a, another baking sheet to help roll up your ink. You will find that when you print with children, ink tends to travel everywhere and the baking sheets really help contain the ink, especially ones that have a larger lip. 
Now, the ink that you will want to be using is a brand name Speedball and it's block printing ink. It is not paint. Ink is quite a bit thicker and it will hold a lot more detail. The great thing about Speedball is that it comes in a smaller tube or a larger jar. And with the tube, it's really nice because it's like toothpaste and it will not dry out. Now the next two items that you will want are a brayer that you can find at Opus Art Supplies as well and a paint palette knife and this will be used to spread the ink. I also like to keep a couple of wet rags just to help with the cleanup and to wipe my fingers. I also picked a bunch of leaves that we're going to be using to print as well and I did find that leaves with a really nice vein like the maple leaves or really waxy leaves worked really well. I found some string in my house and I was really delighted with the results and I will show you prints using string. And I also hand cut a bunch of stencils just using a slightly thicker paper and I will show you um, how to use the stencils as well. So I'm just going to show you some of the prints that I was experimenting with. So here's the print that we're going to start off with and you can see that it's a silhouette and that's really what happens when you lay your leaves down and then you hand print it off the jelly plate. This is a ghost print and I will uh, show you how to do a ghost print and it's really a, an exciting element of jelly printing and mono printing. Here is an example where I took just the leaves and I rolled them up in ink and I printed them and I will show you how to do that. And then here are just some experiments. I was printing with black and I was kind of intrigued but with the black with some of the results because they kind of look like negatives. Here's another example too of ghost printing but using black ink. Here's some color in black ink and it does look a little bit like an x-ray. Here was a print that was really light and I wasn't really happy with and so I just uh, wanted to print over on top of it with black just to see if I could bring out some detail. Here is the first print using the stencil and then here's the ghost print and you can see just some of the details and how it's almost like a mirrored image and then this was a third ghost print. And here is sort of using the string, kind of how fun that the prints looked. We are now going to be rolling out the ink. The first thing that you want to do is you want to spread some ink out on your baking sheet. You don't want to grab too much ink. It's a lot easier to add more ink as opposed to trying to take it away. You want to spread it across the baking sheet and then you want to use your brayer and what you want to avoid is going just back and forth. You can see what happens when you go just back and forth. The ink actually doesn't cover all the way around. So what you want to do is you want to flick and roll your brayer so that you are pushing the ink and you're moving it all around the brayer. I want to show you what happens when you add too much ink. So I've deliberately am adding more ink than necessary and what you're going to start to notice is that the ink starts peaking and when that happens your brayer starts to slip and if you add too much ink onto your jelly plate it, it won't print as nicely as having just a little bit less. So I've just scraped off some extra ink and then just re-rolled it and now we're ready to roll up the jelly plate. What you will want to do when rolling up your jelly plate is to go up and down and then side to side. And I'm also trying to flick my brayer as well so that I'm not just rolling it back and forth. And I'm doing this back and forth, up and down, to try to create a really even layer of ink and making sure that there's no lines 
visible. I have gotten the leaves that I gathered and I will start putting them on the jelly plate. Doesn't really matter how you lay them down, you can have them with the veins going down or the veins going up. The one thing that you do want to avoid though is if you have any stems that are quite bumpy that you'll want to remove them or anything that might be a little bit sharp. The next step is putting the paper on. Now I've pre-cut all of my paper so that it's a little bit smaller than my jelly plate. And then gently lay the paper on the plate. For hand printing, you want a nice even pressure and to do this you'll need the side of your hand and what you want to do is a nice circular motion with a little bit of pressure and you want to ensure that you cover the entire piece of paper, that you're going over all of the leaves that you placed and that you're going back and forth and back and forth in a round circular motion. Once you've finished hand burnishing, you're then going to use the two pads of your fingers in a circular motion again, just to make sure that you now really go over each of the leaves that you've placed down. Now we're going to lift the paper off and see our print. So here is our first print. Now what we're going to do is remove all of the leaves off because we are going to make a ghost print. And I'm keeping the ink right side up because I might want to include them in my ghost print. Make sure that you remove all of the leaves and I might place one or two down, but making sure that the ink is face up. I will grab another piece of paper and I'm going to repeat the exact same process again. it off and here is your ghost print and you can see that there is quite a bit of detail but also too a more of a silhouette where we placed our two leaves as an option you can also ink up the leaves and then you can hand print them yourself option is to use handmade stencils and I'm printing it exactly the same way and I also will be making a ghost print. Cleaning your plate is as easy as scraping off the ink. After scraping off the ink we're going to add another color now. print from something I found in my household and it's just some string. You can use other objects as well but you want to make sure that they're not sharp or too large. <music> 